The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with a brother will be liable to judgment. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman with lust is already committing adultery with her in his heart. Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take false a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all. Let your yes mean yes and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Today our gospel follows from last week where Jesus is speaking to the disciples and calls his disciples, that's you, the salt of the earth. And now he's giving further instruction to his disciple about changing the world. And because it's World Marriage Day, I want to look at this gospel from the point of view of marriage and how in marriage disciples of Christ are called upon to change the world. And we're talking specifically of Christian marriage. One of my favorite pieces of the marriage ritual is from the nuptial blessing prayer from which I will quote O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning, endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Did you hear that, you married couples? Your marriage and the sacrament of marriage that we hold dear was, is identified by the prayer of the church as a blessing, the one blessing that was not forfeited by original sin or washed away in the flood. Think of that. Why? Because this is a sacrament that makes Jesus Christ visible to the world, even though the sin of Adam and Eve took place, that did not change. It was it endured as the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. And so this is a powerful sacrament. And I want to, so I want to look at its effects in the gospel today. What I think are not only that that are things or issues that literally threaten humanity, but at the same time 
the place for the restoration of these things is in the sacrament of marriage. Okay? Not exclusively in the sacrament of marriage, otherwise I would be out of a job. Okay? And so, Jesus speaks about righteousness first. He says, your, your righteousness must be greater than the scribes and the Pharisees. Righteousness is living in a proper relationship with God. And I don't know any place where it's more powerful than doing that in a marriage with two people who have to go through years living together. Okay? But so righteousness is living in the right relationship with God and seeing his standard of living above all else. And that works it, itself out in a particular way. What's right, right relationship as far as God is concerned? Look at Jesus on the cross. And here is a beautiful image of marriage. It is where Jesus is given to his spouse, the church, in a gift of total sacrifice. This is an image of the way all of us are called to love with, with God and with one another, and yet in a more particular way where it works itself out into marriage. When at the altar, a married couple gives themselves totally to one another with the totality of even Christ on the cross that is even said in the vows with the finality of until death do us part. And so it's this type of self-giving relationship that becomes the template of God's understanding of love and proper relationships. A married couple lives this out in a unique way in their vows. And so in the vows, you give yourselves to one another and it even becomes a physical act in the consummation of your vows in giving yourselves to each other. And then when you have kids, you give yourself more. Isn't that true? When we look at Christ on the cross, it begs the question, how are the laws of man working for us? As disciples of Christ, this is what we must uphold and live. And we may have degrees of perfection in living it, but there it is. That's the call for the disciple. What it is to be righteous, brought into the flesh in married relationships. The next thing that we see marriage restoring, Jesus says you shall not kill. That's strong. A couple in marriage is a living word from God about the sanctity of life in the midst of a culture that cries out death for everything. Death and strife. We want to eliminate each other. That's what we see as the remedy. And yet, in a marriage, all right, the Christian marriage is a living word from God that is about life. It's about life and the union of the couple. And as the one blessing that was not forfeit by original sin or washed away by the, by the flood, you see that man and woman's ability to procreate becomes the vision of God's gift of our ability to cooperate with him and even act with him in doing something that's exclusively, re exclusively reserved to him, that is to give life. And the married couple participates in this divine activity in giving new life, in giving life to the world. You hear the words of Jesus echoing, I've come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Most exquisitely is life eternal and life with God. 
And so, in the mandate to not kill, the husband and the wife bring a positive note to this. The relationship is about life and life to the fullness. And in marriage, we defend life at all costs. God's vision of fidelity is also restored in marriage. Jesus says you shall not commit adultery. A couple in a Christian marriage is living their words of commitment in total fidelity in the midst of a culture that even glamorizes adultery today. Have you noticed that? It's something that is trivialized and glamorized. And so we're called to live countercultural, to be living icons of God's fidelity in our marriage. A couple in Christian marriage is literally an icon of God's fidelity. God's fidelity pouring out his whole life for the sake of the beloved. Where all escape hatches are closed and the step in faith toward being exclusively with this one forever is what we do in Christian marriage. In Christian marriage, God restores the vision of the power of his word. Jesus tells his disciples, you shall not take a false oath. And so when a man and a woman stand at the altar, and they repeat their vows to each other. In Christian marriage, they're living God's word that is trustworthy. God's word in a culture that glorifies lies and deceit. Today we have a nice new word for that, or a new phrase, false news or fake news. But we live in a culture as Christians of truth, and we stand as an iconic portrait of what it is to live in truth. And couples in marriage, with God's grace, who maintain these vows, become an icon for everything that God stands for. And while there are difficult situations in marriage, and even while there are marriages that are not always successful, this is not necessary. This is a, it's a revelation of the power of sin in the world that we have to guard against and work against and continue to hold up a dignified marriage in a way that sets the direction s straight, even for those who have perhaps failed or fallen short in marriages. A couple becomes an icon that takes God's word so seriously that their word literally, that his word literally becomes flesh in the living out of their vows throughout their lives. Promises are not taken back. Instead, they are fulfilled. And this is how God works with us. He does not take his promises back, even though we fail or turn away from him. Instead, he continues to strive to fulfill his promises in our lives, in every aspect of our lives. St. Paul describes what he would call a wisdom that is a great mystery. What, we ha what, eyes, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and what has not entered the human heart what God, it, it has not occurred what God has prepared for those who love him. Yes, this is a, a call. A marriage is a call to a vision beyond something that is seen into something glorious that God calls us all, even the celibate. For the celibate, the married couple becomes a great sign of God's grace working in our lives and a great vision of what stands for us in heaven. Regina Jenny, Letare, Alleluia, qui aque menu misti portare, Alleluia, resurrexit sicut di 
Oh, 